Hello and welcome to The Bar Is Loaded. We have the honour today of Mr. Taylor's strength himself, Mr. Danny Taylor. Hello there, you? thanks for having me, sir. My pleasure, my pleasure. So obviously, you know, we are here today to discuss the anniversary, five years. Happy anniversary, Taylor's. Thank you very much. And the latest sports scores as well, as you can see, I'm prepared with my headset here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, cut to, we'll cut between you and Cammy as we need to. But, uh, Cammy was who I had in mind as well when I, when I put this on and I see myself, I thought, yeah, <laughs> pundit. Next thing you turn, I go, I don't know, Chris. <laughs> hey, that was a decent impression, though. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, my, my scouts' impressions have really come on. That's all I've done during lockdown is try and perfect it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on, Jeff. I don't know. <laughs> Looking great, that video, isn't it? Legend. Yeah, such a good video. I mean, for PM. But yeah, that's definitely probably one of the best football things I've ever seen, is that. <laughs> I thought he got sent off, Jeff. <laughs> like, <laughs> Looking over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Last dude, week. Video. But yeah, anniversary, isn't it? Well, it's sort of. A couple of different anniversaries, haven't we? We've got like. The business anniversary, which is always towards the end of the year. Uh, so we're coming up to our ninth year um, and my tenth year of coaching. So ninth year uh, of the business being formed at the end of this year. And uh, the anniversary that we're talking about today is the anniversary of opening our first facility, which was uh, back in 2015. And that was in Wavertree, Liverpool. Um, just absolute slum of a place. But, you know. Everyone's got to start somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, like, what you done might, like, it's everything I wanted me, me first gym to be as well. Because at the time, like, I was following the likes of Joe DeFranco, Zach Evanesh, and some of, like, the, the New York and New Jersey coaches. And they had this, like, this blue-collar kind of environment that they built for their athletes. And, you know, going into the old gym, I don't think you only ever seen pitches, didn't you? Yeah, I've only driven past and yeah, seen pictures of the old gym. Yeah, so going into the old gym, especially the the upstairs, the original units, just like this five six hundred square foot sweat box, um, with like punched out glass, um, so like the the windows are broke. Yeah, you know, like barbed wire on the windows, stuff like that, and like there was that, there was like a lot of other small businesses in there, like uh, small 500 square foot spaces as well, like carpenters and steel workers and things like that. And um, it was a proper like blue collar environment. And you knew when you stepped through the door, you were there to work. Like, and you know, it was, it was dirty and it was good. Got to start somewhere. So that's what we're celebrating five years since then. So that was back in the 1st of June. We opened. There you go. Nice one. Very yeah, good. 2015. Lovely, lovely. And I guess, like, obviously, as a more general thing, like, I know we vaguely caught up during the podcast with Aaron, but, like, how are you in general, man? Like, how's lockdown treated you? That was an excellent podcast. Really enjoyed that. Um, lockdown's been fine for me. I've genuinely been totally fine. I've just been, I've been cracking on as always, and I think that's just who I am, regardless of what's going on. Uh, I always tend to find a way and adapt and overcome if you like if you want to be cheesy about it but uh, that's just in my DNA now like you know I could have used it as an excuse to and a legitimate excuse by the way yep. like because it's a proper unprecedented time and whatnot and just, it's madness at the minute but um, yeah I just kind of looked at what other things that I could work on and I seen it as an opportunity rather than a barrier to overcome. So for me, it meant less time on the gym floor having to coach, which was kind of inevitable for me anyway. Um, some of you might already know listening to this that I'm actually going to be retiring from coaching by the end of this year uh, after 10 years. So mark the 10-year anniversary of coaching for the first time in a gym. Um, and yeah, I so thought like I may as well just make the most of this time and Obviously, I'm I'm a business owner. You've you've got to keep you've got to keep things going. You've got to keep things uh, ticking over. It's a well-oiled machine, and if you don't use it, you know it slows down. And you know you've seen the impact of the virus on a lot of big businesses. Never mind small businesses. You know small businesses have been really hurt by this. But you know the fact that a lot of um, you know multi-million and billion pound and dollar companies have folded as a result of this. 
just goes to show uh, how, how important it is to keep your head in the game and your hands in the dirt, I always like to say. <laughs> no, definitely, mate. And obviously, you know, we've, we've all seen like the little bits that you've been doing during lockdown, you know, the little teasers here and there. And obviously, we'll get on to that, I'm sure. But, um, you know, I, no, I don't think any of us had any doubt, mate, that you wouldn't you wouldn't stick your feet, your head in the sand and just let the pandemic blow over. We all knew you'd be proactive, mate. So, fair fucking play. Got to be. Uh, you know, Taylor's is important to a lot of people, not just me. Um, you know, I when I look at Taylor's now, I don't just, you know, I'm not a self-centered person at all. Like, I uh, don't just see me. Uh, when I see my name on the door, I'm, I'm like proud for everyone. I'm not just proud for me, you know. So, I know how important it is for everyone and it's a big part of so many people's lives and I've looked at what we've done in the last 10 years and five years, just having a gym um, and how much of an impact we can make in the future as well. So for me to take my foot off the gas now, I think would have been a big mistake. And I feel like, um, and as I say, it's, you know, it's totally fine for people to do that given the totally unprecedented situation and, you know, the, the climate of the world now, but um yeah, I feel like we would have been chasing our tail and happened to play catch up quite a bit. And um, yeah, I I I just want to try and get ahead of this and you know try and get back to some normality. And I guess that's why I've done okay uh, during lockdown because I've just I've been just going about me me daily business and you know been sticking to a routine each day and, and whatnot. So nothing's changed really apart from that the environment has changed slightly. I started off by uh, I was still obviously a silver lining for me being a gym owner uh, was still being able to go in and train um, so I was still able to go in and train and then I was coming home and I was on a laptop I've got like a little bit of an office set up in the bedroom here um, so yeah I was lucky in that sense I still I had a, an okay environment to, to work and I know for some people I know like yourself you, you said you had to do some work in like the living room and that was the space yeah. that you also eat in and relax in and you were happy to train there as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I totally get that stress. Um so I was lucky in that sense. Yeah, no, definitely man. And like you say, you know, Taylor's is that space for everyone and like you say it's now it's it's such an important thing in a lot of our hearts, you know, it's not just a gym. You know, we've said this all along, it's it's a family, it's not a gym. Yeah. And you know that's that's a credit to you, and I guess that leads nicely on to like that those early days. Like, what are your sort of early memories when you did start up? <laughs> early memories, um, lots of long hours, I guess. <laughs> I don't think they've got any shorter, have they? I don't think they have. I think I've just replaced them with other work. <laughs> so when I first started out, I was just the coach. Like I, I, I never started this like with the intention of, you know being the business guy and you know behind the scenes and in the office sort of thing like that was all you know on the back seat and I was kind of thinking you know maybe that'll just I didn't even think about it to be honest with you Chris I was just like you know I'll cross that bridge when I get to it <laughs> uh, and ultimately I, I had to cross it and I made the the decision to to focus more on on growing the business and it's clearly paid off uh, as much as, as I'll always be passionate about coaching um, but now that's a good question. I think uh, some of the things that are most memorable from, so you say from the time that we first opened was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, it's just like a crazy influx of new people. Um, it was refreshing for me. Like everything felt new. I think everything was new as well. Like there was a lot of new experiences for me. Um, we just bought like loads of new equipment. I was able to, coach how I wanted there was no like restrictions for me uh, I wasn't I wasn't having to um, worry about stepping on anyone's toes uh, you know I, I didn't have to worry about you know any complaints from anyone else like there was no outside influences it's just this is my thing I can do uh, do this thing my way I can put my recipe together if you like and Yes, they were some of the, the early memories. Um, just long, long hours coaching, I think. Yeah. The most memorable. And now it's just long hours being a businessman instead. Yeah, a mixture. Uh, definitely more hours behind the laptop these days. <laughs> so I guess as well, like you need to know from that is, um, that is something that I've genuinely been interested in. Is obviously, you know, Taylor's, we look at examples Tuesday night, Wednesday night, it's absolutely rammed. 
So in the early days, how quickly did that come about? Is it something that was very gradual or did it sort of just go boom from the off? It went boom from the off. And that's because I knew that in order for us to um, to actually survive, in order for us to be able to um, turn over a profit, I knew I had to really put the work in and I did. So from uh, day one up until I think two or three weeks in, uh, it was really, really hard on like the sales and uh, the marketing front. And I uh, just like, there was kind of a lot of hype around me having my own gym as well from the rapport that I built up with clients and friends and family and their friends and whatever over the five years prior to that. And um, so it was a really exciting time. And there was a look, there, there was a demand for, um, for me to have my own facility, which is ultimately what pushed me that extra mile if you like mm-hmm. to actually take that step um so yeah it kind of went off with a bang chris because um i started uh with like proper group training that's how the groups formed yeah. it was initially just uh, a lads kind of strength training group anyone could join really but it, it was just guys at the time and then i had um had like a girls only fat loss sort of group so uh, at the time the fat loss one was called the rapid fat loss group Mm-hmm. Um, and the the strength group was called Project Steel, so something a bit different. Yeah, now I'd, I'd, I'd heard the Project Steel name thrown around a bit, and uh, didn't actually know until just what I actually stood for. So, so yeah, the powerlifters you see now are the evolved versions of the the original Project Steel members. Nice. So that's what that, that that's what it become. Cool. And I guess as well, like something that I've always wondered is what was obviously in the old one, it was over two floors. So what was it like sort of keeping your eye on two floors, things like that, and like operating over two floors? A nightmare. <laughs> Simply put. It was a nightmare, mate. Um, yeah, it was difficult. We, we'd we done it because yeah. we had to. Like within the first six months, we knew we had to expand. Um, so within nine months, we had our, um, we had our second unit. Uh, so that was downstairs one. So that was the one that was on the front. Um, so yeah, by the way, just to like take a couple of steps back, the upstairs unit was totally out the way. Like no advertisement, just in this lock up in this industrial kind of car park sort of thing. And you had to go like, it was, people used to say it looked like a, a scene of like a horror movie or something because it was like horrible and dirty and yuck. like the, the lights would be flashing and stuff like, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, strobe lights. But um, no, the, there was definitely a disconnect there, and it was um, hard for me because, like, I'd let's just say, for example, I had groups in downstairs. Um, I would always feel guilty having to almost relegate someone to go upstairs to finish the session because downstairs was um, the next step up from the the original place. So, like the the place upstairs, obviously, as I said before, it was like it was beat up. It was blue collar, dirty, grimy. Like the smashed windows and stuff in the winter, absolutely Baltic. Um, like you'd have to do like a, a 20, 30 minute warm up if you want to train without injury. Uh, yeah, the the complaints for the cold were <laughs> just like top of the list. <laughs> and regardless of what heat we got put in, we had like three or four infrared heaters. We had low heaters and it just it still didn't work was, and then in the summer obviously you know on the flip side it was like a sauna so like trying to cool off there was it uh, was a nightmare and then downstairs was um a massive uh, massive step up we had the central heating you know double glazed windows um it was brighter we had like the turf there it was much cleaner it was on the front that was kind of like the showroom of tailors if you like <laughs> so nice. i guess so um like what led to the new tailors that we have what led to looking for that place obviously i assume expansion but like, what was the process of that and how did you come about choosing that as the venue um so we knew from um probably six to twelve months after taking the uh, lease on for the additional unit the downstairs one um, that we'd outgrown ourselves. We we knew that we'd we'd have to move somewhere else, and it was always 
something we wanted to do is to expand into just one larger facility that was more central as well so which is why we chose the city center and this search went on for i'd say casually for probably about um a year and a half and then like really seriously like every single day sometimes multiple times a day looking for new premises literally on the streets looking for a new premises um that came about over the course of probably six to seven months and it was it was pretty intense it got to the point where um, we had about a month or two left on the lease for the uh, for the two units we originally had yeah um, and we still didn't have a location to go to so like some of the things that were going through my head at that time were like right we're gonna have to we're gonna have to shut down we're just gonna have to buy our time and wait for somewhere to open back up and then it was like well what if the business follows during that time like will we have to just kind of press the red button on a limited business and, and just start fresh but once we found a, a new facility or like fundraise and these are some of the, the mad things that were going through my mind at that time it, it was scary to be honest like uh, me and me danny lee and danny staples were, were very stressed trying to trying to find somewhere and um i was I think Danny Lee's job at the time was he was looking at uh, any office premises that had like a, a change of use that could be changed to like leisure use. And um, so we went to view a couple of those. No joy, or people didn't get back to us, or they were just like way out of our price range. Uh, we found a mega like industrial uh, unit, but it was like four or five times the cost com- compared to what we were paying originally. On top of that, you had to pay like your business rates and stuff, which we weren't paying at the time because uh, we had like such a small unit. So uh, the upkeep was low. Um, I My job was to kind of look for everything else. So I was looking at industrial. Uh, I was looking at retail with change of use. And I think I come across uh, where we are now, Truman Street, in a miscellaneous category. So I'd only looked in this miscellaneous category like once or twice. So uh, I guess it was, you know, a coincidence or lucky if you if you like that I'd stumbled upon this, and um, I kind of just had a feeling and knew straight away that this was the one. Yeah. And like I, I lived really close to it, I still do, and um, so it's like a five minute walk from my apartments. It's, you know, central city centre, just off Dale Street, very close to like all your major public transport links. Um, Lime Street's a ten minute walk. Queen Square bus station, you know, just a few minutes walk, Liverpool one, five minutes. And um, so I was kind of like, all all the cards are on the table with this one. You know, we're really excited. Uh, I went down to, to try and uh, visit the previous tenants just to see if I could have a little look around. This was before I even got a view and I was like that excited and also nervous at the time as well, given we only had like a month or so left on the current lease and we just have to go. Uh, And then, yeah, we got the viewing, had a look around. Um, You wouldn't believe me if you've seen the pictures uh, that we took before we turned it into a gym. It was like used for uh, offices at the time. So there was like false walls that were erected. Before that, it was a bar. So there was like an old bar just in the middle of the, what now is the S&C room, um, which we destroyed and unplumbed and, Yes, yeah, so much work went into it. It was an absolute mess when we went in there and yeah, we, we transformed it. But um, yeah, I just remember, I think what one of the, the highlights for me, uh, one of the most memorable things in the lead up to opening where we are now, Chris, was um, I remember it was a couple of weeks before we were due to have to vacate where we were at the time in Wavertree. Um and I got the final lease agreement through from what is now the current landlord and where we are now. And I just remember having to run around like a, an absolute headless chicken on that day because I had to go to like the solicitors. I had to like do this thing where you have to, uh, you have to swear on a, it's called the statutory of declaration. Okay. I can say that perfectly now, but at the time I just couldn't say it. Like, <laughs> I was that stressed and I was running around and like, I remember it being like a really warm day as well. <laughs> but like, uh, and this was, uh, what this was like, I think this was late January, maybe the first week of Feb. And I just remember it, it just being really warm that day or maybe it was just me. Maybe I was just like, <laughs> andropause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, it was uh, it was mad. I remember getting to the the solicitors there, and like they they had to do this thing where I, I had to repeat after the solicitor um, as as like the witness, and I had to swear on this statutory of declaration. And he was like, he got to that part, and he was like, oh, you know, you swear on this statutory of declaration, and I was like, stat 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 status, and I just I literally had, my tongue was twisted. In the end, he was like, it's fine, just sign there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah like come out of there sweating and then um got the keys and here we are nice mate. nice i mean like i've i'm sure i've seen some of the pictures like i do remember like you showed me the picture of, like the wall that separated it and i think one of the best pictures that i remember is just like you just on the floor and i think you were like that was like one of the first few days you were there and you you'd been in there for like 14 hours and just couldn't move <laughs> Sounds all right. Was that uh, was that a picture of me rolled up in a, a mat? Yeah, by yeah, yeah, that's it. But, yeah, I had um, I had a few tough days there. Like, I because we were we had like such a limited amount of time. Like, we 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 were fighting against the clock. You know, we we had um a couple of weeks to get out of where we were at the time. I was also, so in the daytime, I was building, well, knocking things down and then, you know, building this and doing that and moving this around and like decorating and stuff like that. I'm a great painter, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> painter. Like any wall you want painting, I can do it in five minutes. Just <laughs> It's just ingrained muscle memory now. Um, so that was me daytime and I was there from like six or 7 a.m. until like half four or five. And then I'd get the gym to uh, get the bus up to Wavertree to get to the old gym and coach until nine and then repeat. And it was like that for uh, probably about seven weeks. And then there was a small period where we closed for maybe four days. Um, so the turnaround for the members, like we managed to open for the members within, I think it was three or four weeks. We'd done all the demo, uh, we got the equipment in and we decorated everywhere. There was still stuff to be done, don't get me wrong. Uh, and then within eight weeks, we managed to open. Yeah, my Lord, that was stressful. I feel, felt like I had to end my holiday that year. <laughs> no, definitely. Mate. Like, And that was just last year. Madness. Yeah. But I then, believe it. Look at it now. Like, it's completely established and like it's always been there, isn't it? It does feel that way, doesn't it? Like, And it almost felt that way from the beginning as well, mate. Like, as soon as we got the mats down, put the platforms, got the equipment in, I felt like home, you know? And lovingly nicknamed the bunker, the home of strength sports. <laughs> oh, the bunker! I love the, the the nickname for it, uh, boss. And it was the members who come up with that, and I love that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, think uh, someone, I think it was uh, Scouse Kev referred to it as the crypt. <laughs> <One point. laughs> I love that. Uh, <laughs> that 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 is just Scouse Kev, though, isn't it? Like he he would go down like the death metal route and be like, oh, it's like a crypt." <laughs> I love the crypt. We need to get some t-shirts made. Yeah, definitely. Taylor's crypt. <laughs> but um, I guess, like, what was it like then taking all that equipment down? Because I can't imagine that was fun. Like, oh, I know, don't. I, that I, was the worst day of my life. I know I've done a bit of it. Like, we when we got the new stones, like, taking four stones was heavy <laughs> enough. That's but, nothing, young man. Yeah. That's nothing. <laughs> we moved. I th I can't remember. I put it up on um, on the members group because I like all like we had so many members come and help us, and I don't want to start naming people because I'll forget, and I don't want to I don't want to forget someone and upset them. Um, but we had so many people come and help, and people were turning up from like both ends. So like people were turning up from like um, seven a.m. to help us shift equipment out both because the night before that people were still training. And everything was as normal. We'd yeah. only moved like a handful of bits over and off of stuff. Uh, so yeah, like the, the bulky stuff, all the plates, um, the racks. We had all the bars that needed to go. We had like the big tire. Um, we had the farmer's walk stuff, all the dumbbells. And um, there was other bits and bobs that just got like so much. Stuff. I didn't realize how much stuff we actually had. And then the delivery, uh, not the delivery driver, the, the, the removals guy, he was like... Um, Obviously, this is like organized in advance and uh, told them like, you know, what, what, what the deal is. And he was like, yeah, mate, you know, it'll probably take, uh, you know, two or three trips. I was like, sound, sounds good. And then when he arrived, he was like, oh, yeah, mate, just to let you know, I've got another job on at 12, so we can only do two runs. 
It's like, oh, get out of you messing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was stressful, just trying to fill his van up to an illegal amount, <laughs> illegal amount in weight, uh, <laughs> just to get it there. And we still had stuff there after he had to leave. And then, luckily, we had, like, still had, like, a couple of people there who could, you know, get in cars and whatnot. And we hired, like, a like a minibus. And <laughs> it's just, it's the maddest day. You wouldn't even, like, I can't even begin to tell you. Um, <laughs> It was like the earliest stars of my life. I think I got to the gym for like half five. Um, yeah, like just, just starting to bring equipment down. I think Adam, Coach Adam, uh, I think Adam was the next person to come. I think seeing him turn around the corner was like seeing Jesus. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, like someone else to, you know, an extra pair of hands and it made all the difference. I just remember being totally destroyed in the night. <laughs> Just like all the, oh, on the same day as well, mate. We got a delivery of um, I think about sixty uh, square mats. You know the the one yeah, by yeah. ones, uh, and they they're heavy and all. They're not light, they're, are they? They weigh about twenty kilos each, and we had fifty of them. So with the maps there, like it was oh my god, crazy times. Um, <laughs> getting the equipment in, we done it. That's all I can say. We done it. We managed it. It was, yeah, it was mad because I, I don't know. I just, I just remember just being like, and just saying to everyone, you know, everyone's kind of like, oh, do you think you're going to do it? I was like, we're, we're doing it. Like, it's happening today. We're going. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely think, mad. Man. But now that, you know, just that's, that's one thing I hope resonates is like, obviously, I've, there's got a huge appreciation for the gym, but like the fact that those stairs are not fun stairs to get things down. <laughs> So to have brought all stones, the yeah. equipment in one is a fair feat. Like say, mate, like we brought those stones down and that was enough. And I've I've took dumbbells up the stairs and that was enough. But to do all the equipment in one, I is an absolute. Yeah, the, feat yeah when we got delivery of the stones for the first time, um, obviously no one knew what to do with them for a start. They were brand new from Spartan Atlas, uh, and they were like there was no tacky on them. They they had kind of like that. Um, and like the grind the stone down and it's got like that residue on it yeah, which yeah. makes it slippy so it had the residue on it which made it slippy and uh, yeah it was me and Josh Wallers initially who got them down absolute nightmare took us an hour and a half <laughs> and that was for the lighter ones so god help you use those heavier ones there was more to use though I remember yeah yeah there's about four of us but I think if there wasn't four of us you'd have needed new stairs so it's probably a good job there was four yeah, I'm pretty sure we were fucked at the time as well I was totally fucked. I hadn't trained for eight weeks. Um, I saw his nurse and a couple of injuries as well from manual labor, <laughs> painting too many walls. Uh, and I think Josh was nursing an injury as well. I seem to remember his back playing up at that around those times. So, yeah, two cripples trying to get the, the stones down the stairs, an alien object to us at the time because we're two powerlifters and got no idea. <laughs> yeah, we'll get you on the stones one day, mate, I'm sure. I've done the 90 with no tacky when it was new. Um, so I feel like I could do the 100 now because it's got some tacky on it. Yeah. I feel like I could get the 100 up. Nice. We'll see. Yeah. I'm just dead stubborn. Like, I'm really stubborn. That's why all this has worked, by the way. If anyone's wondering, I'm not crazy. I'm just stubborn. Like, once I start something, I just won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got to end. Like, it, there's got to be a result. <laughs> <laughs> and the result is there, mate, for everyone to see. There you go. So I guess, um, like, we'll go with what is the fondest memory you've had in the new place then so far? It's a good question. Fondest memory in the new place. Um, I think it's difficult to put my finger on one. Obviously, the open day was important. Mm-hmm. the first uh, I think we'd done that on the 14th of April or something like that last year uh, I had like friends and family there so I, you know having my mum there and you know she was uh, she come over and told me how proud she was of me and stuff got me emotional I was just like and I'm choking up now thinking about it um, other than that I'd say uh, the Battle of the Bar competition that we done um, that was amazing um, just being able to actually put something on on a larger scale, 
Uh, I think we've done a couple of seminars. The mental health muscle one really stands out for me. Obviously, we had Aaron on last week for that. Uh, but it was the first time that we met him. You came to that one, didn't you? I did. I did indeed. Yep. Yeah. It was the first time we met. Um, yeah, I think that was that. That was a good one because we'd never been able to do anything on that scale before, as well. So yeah, I guess I guess things like that were nice. Um, Barsty would have been nice this year. <laughs> Still will be nice. That would have been. Know. Yeah, we'll do it. That would have been a, a massive. I think that would have been possibly the most memorable, um, most memorable event or most memorable thing to happen there. No, yeah, no. I guess uh, I think ultimately all the new faces and all the people who we can now call, you know, part of the, the the Taylor's family. Nice that people have settled in so quickly and feels like they've been there for a long time. No, definitely, mate. Definitely couldn't agree more. You know, like graciously enough, like I've been there. Well, I think I joined in April and then became a member of staff by the what the July, sometime like that, June, July. You had a quick turnaround, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, pretty quick turnaround. So, yeah. you know, Came to try out the kit and now you're facilities manager. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> took me podcast off me. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> I've told you, mate, I'm coming for that desk. <laughs> you just want that brown chair, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely, mate. That, that's my, that's yeah. my goal. I've, I've took, the, took the position of manager. I've took the podcast. That chair and that <laughs> desk are mine. You know, yeah, you can have the desk. You're not having the chair because I can't sit in this chair I'm sitting in now. It's disgusting. Sound right. I'll, <laughs> I'll get a new chair. Yeah, new chair. As long, get, as, long as you get the desk, mate, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess like obviously now that like you know it's established and all that, like what's the plans yeah. going forward? Then obviously you know you said you've had all this time during lockdown. Like, what has been in place there? That obviously I know we'll keep some things under wraps, but letting the people know sort of what. What can they expect to come back to? Any changes, anything like that? Uh, like what you expect from Taylor's is what you're going to get. Um, but we will always continue to refine what we do. And I don't want to continue like offering new services and doing this and doing that. Like we have something special for a reason. And it's because we're very good at the, uh, at the few things that we do. So I don't want to... Um, become a jack of all trades Jim I want us to really be, like become the best at like strength sports which is what we do you know we've we've really made way in powerlifting um over the last five years and I believe we will continue to lead from the front there um in Liverpool and uh maybe in you know other locations in the future as well uh, it's no secret that uh, I want to expand uh, the business to other big cities across the country as well. However long that takes, I just want to make sure that it always retains the values and quality, which is you know the bottom line, um, the family feel, the good culture. It's really important to us, really important to me. Uh, I also always want to kind of be boots on the ground guy. I don't want to be uh, sitting at home like I am now on a laptop, which is why I'm going back on Monday because like full time on Monday because. Uh, I wanna, I wanna be there. I wanna soak it up. I wanna be in the environment. I wanna be really in touch with what's going on. Not so much day to day because I need other people like yourself to be able to do that. Um, I need to be able to step back and look at the big picture and whatnot. Um, but yeah, like Taylor's will continue to re- continue to retain its core values. Uh, we will still have all like the same stuff as. Uh, what you've come to expect every time you come in now, uh, but expect tweaks that make these things better. The experience, the quality, the small things, the aesthetic, the feel. It's uh, all, all these things that we want to improve. Uh, things that I've been working on recently, which I've had the opportunity to, uh, is like the website. We want to make that more interactive for members. Um, we have just launched our own app. Um, and that's members only so it's so you can take that experience with you outside of the gym you can use it while you're in the gym and use it to interact with certain things so uh, we've got a couple of other things happening um which are in the pipeline like uh we've got like um 
a new barcode system as well. So there'll be like, obviously with this whole Corona thing, uh, we want to limit the amount of things that are being touched. So we're going to take away the keypad and we're going to link everyone's memberships to the app. So you just literally get the app up and then just scan in and it's linked to your membership and you can kind of view everything on there. Um, going forward, we are going to be um, going a little bit harder on the merch game. So we're going to be investing more there. Um, we've got a couple of other things which members are aware of, uh, but I don't want to say too much right now. Some things are best left unsaid, but um, got to keep a couple of, couple of secrets, haven't we? Exactly. You've got to keep some things up the sleeve, haven't you? Yeah, that's it. Um, what else is going on? I'd say media future is just getting getting people back, uh, making sure that we continue to leave from the front in terms of um, quality of coaching, producing results for people, um, creating an, a comfortable, secure, fun environment for people to come and train in. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of where we're at. We still want to emphasize like the group coaching and the training and stuff like that. I really want to really want to invest heavily in weightlifting and strongman going forwards. You, you two are the kind of two new kids on the block. Um, so we want to do what we've done with powerlifting, but for weightlifting and strongman as well. Um, so yeah, I guess that's what's happening in the immediate future and it will happen. Nice. Beautiful. And obviously, um, like the app has been a great new thing. So, Obviously, we did early access, didn't we? And that's worked out really well. And so, I guess, I'll have you found the app so far? Great. Yeah, a couple of teeth and problems. We still have a couple of issues with it, but it's still early days. Uh, so, we're, it's kind of still early access. So, we've not opened it up to every single person yet. Um, just people who've continued to support us just as a you know an extra thanks to them. And, you know, they can... It's good. Like, everyone wins in that sense. They get more value. Uh, and we get feedback and we can we can change and improve things like the app when it first uh, launched was very bare bones very basic if you remember mm -hmm. um, and over time like we've we've added more content we've got like the groups and stuff on there uh, we'll continue to add new features as they become available as well it just depends on like the software provider and what they can do for us because that this is all linked with uh, the new the new management system as you know so i'm um, really happy with it otherwise mate i think um it's a platform for us to be able to communicate specifically with our community, regardless of whether someone's on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, mm -hmm. like everyone's all in one place. Plus you've got your micro communities and the, the strongman weightlifting, powerlifting things can be posted specifically to those communities. You can create your secret groups, which means that coaches um, can communicate with all of their clients in one place instead of you sending a message to Steve on WhatsApp and then, copying and pasting that message and sending it to five people on Facebook and then uh, Rodney's on Twitter and not on any of them. So then you're like, well, oh, what's wrong? Then you have to message Steve. Is Rodney on Twitter? Like, do you know what I mean? Everyone's yeah. just in one place then. So it's going to be easier for us to communicate changes and that's going to be really helpful going forwards on the return from Corona as well. So, yeah. And then like, you know, like other features on there. So obviously we know you can get the podcast on there now. So then you get a link to that, a link to the yeah. YouTube. Like what else can people do with it? Um, so we've got it's it, the emphasis is on the community features, um, the way you can post in the groups and stuff like that. We will, and I may as well just talk about it now. I'm building a credit system within the software uh, where we can reward people for various things, things that they achieve, uh, birthdays, da -da -da -da, and they'll be able to use them against things like merchandise, consumables in the gym. This is for when we reopen, of course. Um, you can book your sessions through there as well. Now, we've not got all the coaches properly set up on there yet, just with us being closed, but uh, everyone's going to be set up on there by the time we reopen. Um, so you'll be able to manage your membership on there too. Uh, all, other than that, you've got access to um, all our content. So like you said, the, the bar is loaded stuff. I uh, want to link the YouTube we can also um, create almost like a hub for other bits of content and you can only access it through the app then. So that's yeah, cool. Like definitely the feature I love, like you say, like is that, that you can just buy consumables before you even there. Like 
you can purchase them through the app too, which is a store feature, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's a really helpful thing. Like it'll probably save time. Like people will more than likely like come in and think, oh shit, like I can buy rain before I even get there and just walk That's in. It, mate. Yeah. And I think with a lot of businesses not accepting money and we won't be accepting a hard cash. Uh, I still don't want us to accept hard cash when we reopen for a for a period of time. We'll you know, we'll go with the guidelines, but um that will enable people to just link it to the bank or whatever it is they want to do, the PayPal. And, um, you know, as you said, if someone forgets the wallet or leaves the card, you know, at home or whatever it is, they can just do it through the app. Yeah. Saves the flapping about. And, you know, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that a member of staff has to be there to do it then. Yeah, exactly. And I think that was sort of the one semi-pain last time, wasn't it? That we'd have to wait till like either you or Danny with like the card machine were there. Someone That's it. The card and, yeah. Then it saves people having to find around with say, shouting out the PayPal and things like that. Like literally That's just it. Yeah, yeah. So like if Michelle was in in the morning or something like, um, you know, let's say one of her clients would always get uh, a rain or whatever, um, but wouldn't have the means to pay by card. So it would end up, you know, having to either not get it or like owe cash later or something. Um, so yeah, it just, um, it makes it more accessible for people. Cool, cool. And I guess like another th- little avenue to go down is we've had that meeting the other week with Soph about um, LJMU powerlifting. So yep. now I know we have a few of those guys listening. So going forward from that, like what, obviously anything you'd want to add with those guys? Uh, with John Moores? Yeah. I know obviously you have your heart in the other camp, but you know. <laughs> I'm a double agent. Double agent. <laughs> double agent. I, I coach the University of the Pool, um, but and my gym hosts John Moores. So, uh, yeah, we've, you know, we've got our fingers in both pies there, so to speak. Um, no, I'm really excited for the future of like John Moores and Taylor's. Um, last year was a big success, which I think hurts more because we didn't actually get to, um, we didn't get to the pinnacle of it all. We didn't get to kind of reap the hype because it was built up over the, academic year and you know every you know every every morning I'd come in and there'd be like a handful of students training for it and you know to be able to see them progressing and getting stronger and getting excited and lead up to this um it was it was it was nice you know it was different and um I'm just gutted that we you know we didn't actually get to to do it but we will we will at a later date so uh based on last uh academic year um excuse me Really excited for the future with John Moores and then um, whatever else the University of Liverpool want to do. Um, I think it's it's just going to keep going. It's going to keep getting bigger, the whole varsity thing. Um, you know, it just started off as a, well, well, no one else is doing this, let's do it, sort of, sort of thing. And now we, you know, we're, we've got strong affiliations with uh, both main universities uh, in this city. And we want to build on that as well and take it elsewhere. So. That's great. Very good. And I guess that then the biggest question is this whole episode has been around the five years. So what does five years time from here look like? Obviously we've touched on a few bits, but what's that what's that big next five years gonna be for you in your head? Honest, I don't know. Because if I'm gonna base it on the last five years, so much has changed. Yeah. We've literally gone from me, Danny Staples and Dale Sangster throwing around a couple of dumbbells to what has become like <laughs> just it's it's just crazy what it's become this this culture, you know, it's mad. Like we've we're sitting at the forefront of powerlifting right now in the city and um it's mad. Like we've changed so many people's lives. Um you know, we've we we've impacted so many people and you know, clients old current and future uh it's it's mad to think how many people have, have come through that door and you know we've we, we've still got a lot of really uh, loyal original members now as well so there's no one from like the, the very original groups they're gone now but at the same time um there's new people coming all the time who you know fill those gaps and you know they they, they fit in really nicely in the culture of it all so that's a good question mate so I, as I say, honestly, I, I just don't know. 
I know it's going to be like what we have now, but just better and bigger. And yeah, just better and bigger, I guess. And that's probably like a, a really, really shit answer. But I don't know, just thinking back over the last five years, that's to where we are now. That's what's happened. We've just, we've just become better at what we do, but on a larger scale. And I think that's what, what's going to happen again. So I don't know. Can you imagine Taylor's in double the size space where we are now? In with, space? <laughs> yeah, in space. <laughs> Get us on a SpaceX rocket now. Yeah. <laughs> There's Taylor's on Mars. <laughs> so yeah, if you can imagine that, just like double the space you've got now. Um, that means we've got double the capacity for our family, our clients. That means we've got double the amount of coaches. That means we've got double the amount of quality results that are being um, that are being achieved. And, and yeah, I, I just feel like this is it's going to continue to blow up. Like the momentum is real. Like I, I, I feel it every day, and that's what drives me. No, definitely. And you know, you look at look at the amount of talent we're producing now. You know, Dennis, Shana. You know, you, yeah. you think of the talent that we're going to continue to produce and think of in five years' time how much talent we will have produced. It's, exactly. it's nothing but a great thought to have. It's mad. We've gone from just going to, like, local comps. So, like, we're going to talk about competitions. We've gone from just doing local comps to sending people to the World Championships. And to say that out loud, like, gives me goosebumps. <laughs> like, it's, it's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. We've got European champions... We've got British champions. It's a dream come true, dude, honestly. Like, proper cloud nine for me. Yeah, definitely, man. And, you know, like you say, like, it's it's just a credit to you. It's a credit to the coaches. It's credit to everything, you know, credit to the environment that we can produce this calibre of athlete and yeah. we'll only continue to produce that. And it won't just be in powerlifting, it'll be in ollie lifting, you know. Look at some of the ollie lifters we've got coming through. Look at some of the strongman athletes we've got coming through. It's The world is literally Taylor's and it will be Taylor's. I like your style. This is why you're FM. <laughs> you me? No, mate. Uh, it's uh, I know exactly what you're talking about, and um, the quality of uh, athlete and the standard of athlete. Should I say actually, the standard of athlete just increases constantly at the gym. Mm. And I think when we do ultimately expand to say another location, whether that's Manchester or wherever, space, um, space. space like it, it's it's only going to up the ante and then you're going to start like getting your Liverpool, your HQ, like they're, they're the pride of Taylors. They're, they're going to want to be the absolute best of the best. And then you're going to see like your Manchester crew or whoever looking at that and thinking, now we need to be better than them. We need to show them. Like, and then there's just that like, you know, that banter and that, that, that friendly kind of competition and rivalry that you'll get going on. Bev's doing to clubs and stuff. And yeah, the world's our oyster, my friend. I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah, uh, definitely. I think the, I think the inter club tournaments will be absolutely insane. It's going to be sick. I can already see it now. <laughs> There's more planning, and you see, that's me. Is why you are now the business side of things and look like that, and I'm still in that coaching stage. And look like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't get me wrong. A week ago, like you should have seen my absolute flockhead and me beard. It was it was beyond taming. Like, you know, when you wake up with bed and there's just no fixing it unless you get in the shower and comb your hair for half an hour. That was literally the point I was at. And I was like, right time for the COVID cut. <laughs> it, nah. it, untamable. Yeah, mine's definitely getting that way. It's just getting more and more painful. I'm to leave it, but... Sick but you're growing her out. Exactly, mate. The sick fade's got to come back, so fuck it, yes. it'll come back. Yes, I like your style. <laughs> Does, like, is there anything like you'd want to add? Like, is there anything that you know you thought about that you wanted to speak about? Um, over the last five years, uh, no, I guess just like a genuine thank you from the bottom of my heart to every single person from the past, um, currently, and in the future who's going to be and become a big part of of Taylor's. To all the coaches, you know, thanks for uh, absolutely everything. Like, you know, you guys are the, are the bread and butter. Communities, just the heart of it all, the core. Um, yeah, I uh, I'm still just some crazy stubborn dude, and 
I guess that's why Taylor's is on its way and it's why it's here now. But there you go. So, no, just a, a genuine thanks to everyone from over the years. It means so much. And I mean, you know, end of the day, mate, we've, we've all got to thank you. You know, you've given us this, this, excuse me, this, this platform to perform in. You've given us this environment to train in. You've given us the community to be a part of. So the biggest thank yous to you, mate, you know. Appreciate it. Pleasure. So, yeah, man, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you very much. You know, it was always going to be an episode to talk about the gym and we've had that opportunity. So. Thank you, no, sir. I, I like this one. Thanks for having me on. I've done um, when I when it used to be my podcast last <laughs> season. We done like uh, we done like an anniversary episode. It was celebrating the company. Um, so that'll be interesting to go back to listen to the difference, um, just in terms of like where we are now. Because when we recorded that episode, uh, we were still in the old gym. So it'll be interesting to talk about uh, and look back and and listen to. Um, the differences and see what we were thinking about then in terms of the future. I think that'll be interesting. Pretty sure we've done another one as well at the very, very beginning. We were talking about origins, like yeah, yeah I've seen it. Yeah. Come from, and I think that was the first episode, the pilot. To be honest, I think me and Thomas just chap your shit, which is why you're doing this now and not me, <laughs> <laughs> because it needs to be better. So yeah, yeah, I think maybe that's one of the qualities. Maybe that's why Taylor's has survived because if I'm not good at something, I'll just say right, or you know, I'm I'm not consistent with something or whatever it is. I'll just be like, right, can someone else just do this? <laughs> it's fine, mate. You just stick to your football commentary. It's sound. Yeah, well, I've got the scores here. <laughs> now, uh, absolutely, with me, my Xbox headset. Well, to make made all the difference. Now, thanks for me having me on, dude. I appreciate it. No, pleasure, mate. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much. And we will no doubt catch up very soon. I'll look forward to that day. Thank you, man. Right. Enjoy the rest of your day, dude. And been nothing but a pleasure. Cheers, Chris. Thank you, mate.